Welcome to the Knit My Way Home podcast. There's a Scottish poet named Robert Service, and he's very, very famous here in the Yukon. He wrote many poems about the Yukon, and I'm going to read you just a little piece of one called The Spell of the Yukon. The summer no sweeter was ever, the sunshiny woods all athrill, the grayling a-leap in the river, the bighorn asleep on the hill, the strong life that never knows harness, the wilds where the caribou call, the freshness, the freedom, the farness. Oh God, how I'm stuck on it all. The winter, the brightness that blinds you, the white land locked tight as a drum, the cold fear that follows and finds you, the silence that bludgeons you dumb. The snows that are older than history, the woods where the weird shadows slant, the stillness, the moonlight, the mystery. I've bade him goodbye, but I can't. There's a land where the mountains are nameless and the rivers all run God knows where. There are lives that are erring and aimless and deaths that just hang by a hair. There are hardships that nobody reckons. There are valleys unpeopled and still. There's a land, oh, it beckons and beckons. And I want to go back, and I will. In the last golden days of September, I was very lucky to be able to go and join a few friends at an off-grid cabin in the wilderness. So I packed up my knitting and my hip waders and a basket of food and I headed off with the Knitty Stew, Oliver Rain Knits, K-Zip Knits and Crooks Fibers for a weekend of fiber and fun. The cabin is quite deep in the wilderness. There's no running water, there's no electricity, and it was wonderful to more or less put the cameras away and just enjoy the time we had together. I am by nature quite an introvert, and so I had no idea what an adventure lie in store for me when Natalia suggested that we make this podcast together. But I am so grateful to be part of this community of gentle souls. I hope that you're enjoying this little glimpse into that special weekend and that you can draw inspiration yourself from it. We are all podcasters, so we mostly managed our resolve to put the cameras away. Of course, the time went by so quickly, but the memories that we made together, well, I know they'll stay with me for the rest of my life.
about a week ago, we went for a picnic in the mountains, and I asked Natalia to take a few pictures of me with my newest shawl, and she recorded this little bit of video. I had no idea that she was recording, but I thought it would be really fun to add it in so that you can see what we do behind the scenes. shall we? I hope that you enjoyed that little bit um, about the time that we had out there at Brittany's family's cabin, Crooks Fibers. It was a very, very special time and I'm so grateful to have been invited to join that excursion. Um, I think it's hard right now, right? It's really difficult days and I think that it's important for us to dig into community and um, and into the support for each other and um, taking time to be together with the people we care about, our friend groups, our families, and actually also ourselves. I don't know if you do a silent retreat or maybe you never even heard about it, but it's a practice that I have developed for myself over the years. Quite some time ago I used to go on actually curated silent retreats but where I live now uh, they don't come up so I don't have the opportunity unless I were to leave the territory and I'll explain to you how I do it. So I set aside a few days and I go on a silent retreat by myself twice a year once in the summertime or early summer spring and that one I really feel like I need that for myself because I'm one of these people and I don't know if there's, well, I don't know about the seasonality of ourselves. I don't know if there are people who thrive in the spring and people who thrive in the autumn, but I'm one of those who really treasures the coziness of autumn for me, the falling light and uh, the colder weather, the quieting is uh, very welcome. I'm really, really happy in it. Actually, just this morning, I was talking with someone about the changing of the seasons and the person I was talking to really finds this time of year difficult, finds it um, almost depressing and I'm the exact opposite. I find autumn to be so comforting. I look forward to autumn every year and um, I, I, I love the hush that falls over the whole forest where I live. It just, things slow down and it gets quiet and I really like that. I feel like even time moves at a different pace. So silent retreat for me uh, is about that, is about creating an opportunity for time to move at a different pace and creating an opportunity to listen to myself inside, my inner voice, my interior self, um, maybe to process thoughts and unfinished thoughts and um, prepare myself to move forward in life. And so what I do for silent retreat is I reserve usually 24 hours, 48 hours, time when I can go away and be totally quiet I actually leave my home for this. I go camping all by myself and I, um, I'm very intentional about it. I'm quiet, but it doesn't mean that everything is completely silent because I do create a structure for that time. And um, what I do is I actually choose certain lectures or a podcast episode or 
something like that that I'm going to listen to and think deeply about. And so it's not that I am necessarily in silence, although I spend a lot, a lot of that time in silence. And um, that quietness offers something. But what I do is turn off my phone, turn off um, electricity, stop the noise, and give myself um, a container of quietness where I can allow the unfinished to come forward into my mind and I can think about what comes next. And um, I find it a very renewing, very nourishing practice. Now, of course, out at the uh, knitting retreat that I was on, it was not like that at all. It was noisy and fun and there was lots of laughter and it was just a wonderful time. But um, what I'm saying is that you don't necessarily need to go with a group of friends. You can go on your own as well and create a space for yourself. And um, I don't think that there's very many opportunities in life just to be quiet. And I know, at least for me, slowing down and taking time to listen to my body, to listen to my thoughts, just focus on something that isn't work or family life, school, uh, sports for the children, all of that sort of thing, just to hush that down a bit and make room for myself. I find to be a very, very valuable thing. Um, so I, I offer you that as an idea. You know, there's, there's many ways that we can experience retreat. And I hope that uh, that's provided you a little bit of inspiration. So the knitting, well, first of all, what I'm wearing. I will say that I, I'm not one of those people who only knits for, for myself I, um, and never ever buys knitwear that I didn't make myself. Actually, this piece that I'm wearing is um, from Gudrun Hjorden and I love it. And why I love it is because it's very, very small gauge. This would be a fingering weight project if you were to knit it yourself. I don't know if you can see that, probably. Anyhow, this would be a fingering weight garment and I have found that fingering weight and my hands do not love each other. So fingering weight for small projects, yes. Fingering weight for a whole garment, especially an all-over colorwork garment, I think my hands would suffer too much for that. So uh, the knitted piece is um, is a wool piece I bought last year from Gudrun's collection. I don't think that it's available anymore, but I really love it, especially right now at this time of year. I think the colors are awesome. And then the shawl, though, that I'm wearing, I did knit myself. I knit this actually quite a long while ago, and I have to say it probably could do with another blocking. So if you make something like a cable work like this, well, put it this way, it, it's not necessarily one and done. Like over time, as you wear it, you might want to re-block it and, and stretch the fibers back out again so that the cables really, really pop. But I wear this one all the time. I love the color. I loved knitting it. And it's it's not hugely big. You can see the bottom here. Like, this could really benefit with another blocking. It's not a hugely big shawl. It is triangular shaped with this beautiful cable work panel. I love it. Um, I knit it in Cascade yarns that I got from my local yarn shop, as I say, quite some time ago. The shawl is called Cozy Winter, and it wasn't actually 
that I was planning on wearing it or showing you. It's just what I was wearing today. And um, so, so it's like a little bonus. I can't remember the designer's name. I'm so sorry. I will definitely link it below. I wrote a Ravelry page on it, so you can see it over there. I'll link that as well. But it's just such a cozy piece. I wear it all the time. It goes with so many things. And um, it's definitely a pattern that I would knit again. It's really, really nice for uh, gift knitting. I have knitted one as a gift as well because it knits up really fast. Even though it's loads of cables, it knits up really, really fast. So because it's small and because of that garter piece. So I don't know, I found it a very enjoyable shawl to make. So that's what I'm wearing. What about what I've been knitting? Let's go back two episodes. I think it's two episodes. Maybe just one. Anyhow, I did an episode of the podcast where Natalia and I were kayaking, or you might have seen it on Instagram when we went kayaking together. We go quite a lot, but we don't record very often. And that day we did record while we were in our boats. And I was wearing a cowl that I was going to tell you about. So here it is. Oh, and you might be wondering where Natalia is. Natalia is not joining us this time because she is working on the um, the other October podcast release. We're going to do two episodes this month. Uh, one is this one, which has nothing whatsoever to do with Halloween. The other episode that we're going to release is all about Halloween. So if you don't like Halloween, you can give it a miss. And if you do like Halloween, there's a lot of spooky fun coming your way. And Natalia is right now working on that. So she's not here this time, but she'll be here for the Halloween episode. And then if you miss that one, she'll be back in November. So um, with loads of things to show you as well. She's been quilting quite a lot. Uh, I'm not going to show you any of that stuff, but she will. Anyhow, I did um, wear a cowl that I was going to show you, and it's this one. And I like it very much. It's uh, knit as a tube, and then you Kitchener stitch together. And I'm not great at Kitchener stitch. I'm just going to say that. I'm not the world's greatest Kitchener stitch person. Um, but I, I didn't mind doing it in this. It's such a small project and it's so warm that because it's knit as a tube, you get that double thickness, which is wonderful. This is the Martellan cowl. It's designed by Lotta Lothgren and I really, really like Lotta Lothgren's patterns. She also dyed the wool. So Lotta has a wool shop called Elk Market Yarn and uh, she does her own hand dyeing with natural materials. And I have to say, Lotta is a color genius. She's extremely good at what she does. The color is so even, it's so beautiful. This is her Sagan yarn and I, I just think she's wonderful. She's a wonderful dyer. She's um, really, really good at pattern writing. I like her patterns very, very much. So this one, you can see it's got that crossover that creates a V neck line and it's so cozy. I've gotten already a lot of wear out of this. It's, I love it because it's nice and high on my neck it's thick, it sits, I knit it so that it would sit quite close. If you like a looser cowl, you can very, very easily modify it to make this as big as you want, the tube as big as you want. You could even make um, a scarf, one of those infinity scarves so that you can twist it and put it on so that you'd have four layers around you. That would be so warm and cozy. But I used a kit from Lotta's shop and I'm super pleased with how it turned out. So there's that. And this is going to be an episode all about the 
the wonderful world of Cowl. So that's the first one. Major win, I love this. It's very easy, uh, the pattern is easy to memorize. Even though you're working three-stranded color work, it's, it's a breeze, it's not hard at all. This one is the next one that I wanted to show you. I finished this quite a while ago and you might have seen it before if you've been watching our podcast because I have shown it way long time ago, but I wanted to bring it back because the Nitty Stew, along with the Cat Bank girls, are hosting a knit along and it's called the Just for the Halibut Knit Along. Um, you can go and check out the Nitty Stews podcast to find out more about that. I'll link below. She's published on Instagram details about the cow, the, the, cow, the knit along. And I am really thinking about joining because I just love the whimsical motif. So Caitlin Hunter, Boyland Knitworks, has this cowl pattern, which is, I think, so whimsical and fun, but she's also created a hat or a toque to wear with this, and she has it as a yoked sweater where the halibut go around like that. It's the yoked sweater that I'm thinking of knitting up to join in that knit along, and um, I was thinking about doing it in Plotolopi. I'm not sure yet. I haven't totally, totally decided. If I do, I'm going to use uh, a navy blue. And I think rather than the, the rich brown that I have here, I would go for more of an oatmeal. Because then I could wear them together and they would be a little bit different. I don't know. I think that would be really fun. This one I knit from... Sonder Yarn Company's Sunday Morning DK. Oh, such beautiful colors, such lovely yarn. The yarn comes from Great Britain, but Sonder Yarn Company is based out of Montreal. It's the woman who used to run Espace Tricot and uh, she sold Espace Tricot to somebody else now. And the women who run the shop now are wonderful. I've ordered um, quite a few times from Miss Bastrico, and I'm always really, really happy with the service I get. But this is uh, the beautiful Sonder yarn that Melissa is now making, and it's so luxurious. This is Blueface Luster and Masam, Maham, Masham pronunciation. Anyhow, it's really, really, really nice yarn. And the colorways that she has come up with are rich, sumptuous, lovely colorways. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because I'm super excited for the Nitty Stew to have her first knit along that she's hosting. Another cowl to show you. I told you this is going to be all about cow cowls, actually all about neckwear, I think. So this one, this one, this one. Not enough yet, how about one more? So this is the Birds and Ships. And it's so cute. I really, really like it. Again, by Boyland Networks. This is a fun pattern to knit. I highly, highly recommend this one. And again, it comes up nice and high. I really, really like that. It's so warm and so cozy. The lace work panel is super easy. It's very intuitive. It's easy to memorize. It's a great project. If you've never knit a lace project before, try this one if you wanna learn how to do it because it's very easy and it's only this much lace and um, I think it would be a great first project for somebody who wants to learn to knit lace, lace work in their knitting. So I was inspired to knit this by my friends out at uh, the cabin there. Nitty Stew had 
a cowl like this that she had made. She made hers though in low mileage wool from Crooks Fibers and I want to show you that yarn. It's so beautiful. There is another um, mill run that I know is just about ready for sale. This low mileage wool is a project that Crooks Fibers has come up with, with a Canadian shepherd who has a very beautiful flock of, I believe they're Gotland Finn Cross. Um, and she does two mill runs in a year. So it's available, but in very, very limited quantities and so worth it. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. It is an investment, but I think it's a worthwhile and one. And this cowl pattern can be knit up with just one skein. So it's a great project if you want to try out um, this low mileage wool. It's really lovely. I don't know if it's coming through. Can you see the way it just shines? It's so beautiful. I might have to knit another cowl using the low mileage wool myself. I I loved it. So the Nitty Stew had one and then Crooks Fibers saw hers and she wanted to cast one on and then I wanted to cast one on and pretty soon we were all knitting birds and ships cowls together. I will say a couple of things about the pattern that I learned from Leanne of the Nitty Stew. So thank you Nitty Stew for this. When you're knitting this pattern, um, I followed the pattern exactly as written with one exception and that exception was a suggestion from the Nitty Stew. She suggested that for the ribbing we go up a full needle size because when she knit hers she found that this ribbing had a tendency to curl up a bit and she picked it back and then she knit it again but a needle size higher and then she did a very loose bind off and she said that she after that she had no more problems with this bottom part curling up like that. I never had that problem. Thank you to the Nitty Stew for her suggestion because I did knit mine with um, a larger needle size. And then for the bind off, I used an Icelandic bind off, which is one that I use quite often. And I do find it gives quite a loose bind off quite a stretchy, well, maybe not a loose bind off, but rather a stretchy bind off. Um, Crooks Fibers, when she knit hers, her bind off was Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, and that one worked really well as well. It's such a cute pattern, and because there's that garter panel near the top, it is so warm and cozy. I used Crooks Fibers, um, Oh, there's the cuckoo clock. I used Crooks Fibers uh, Blue Face Luster Fingering Weight and she was testing out a new yarn base to dye on, which she was calling at the time Yak Fluff. And I don't know if that's its forever name or not, but I did talk to her and she said she would continue to carry the lace weight yarn. And I'm really glad because it is so beautiful. The color that I chose, the colorway is called Frigid and um, I used Frigid in the Blue Face Luster fingering weight and then I paired it with Frigid in the Yak Fluff and it just created this wonderful color by pairing them together. The Blue Face Luster is a cream color and the Yak Fluff is gray so when it's dyed up, they come out slightly different. And that very slight variation in the colors created a really, really beautiful fabric with a good depth of color, even though it's a very light color. I love Brittany's Frigid colorway. I think it's so wearable. It goes with so many other colors. I think it's a great, great color. And the cowl with this whimsical little tassel I think is so cute. I love it in this color. I know I'm going to wear it a lot. If you don't like the tassel, you don't have to knit it. 
it looks good without the tassel as well. I like it. But I also, <laughs> after seeing Brittany's and, um, and the Nitty Stew's cowl done in that low mileage wool, oh, I have a feeling I'm going to turn this into this because it's just so beautiful. The low mileage wool, I did say, is an investment. And that's because Brittany tries very hard, Crooks Fibers tries very hard to make sure that uh, the shepherd is paid a fair price for the wool. And um, it's, and, and also the mill. So it's really, really beautiful. And it's very small batch. Um, single flock and it only comes out twice a year so it is quite precious. I would recommend knitting something that um, you think you want, will want to enjoy for years and years and years because this yarn there's something magical about it. It just gets better with age. You know how sometimes you knit a project and then um, you wear it and it's great for a while and then it starts to change shape and the yarn starts to stretch out or whatever happens to it. It it pills like crazy. That's not the case with low mileage yarn. Low mileage yarn somehow just improves and improves and improves with age. I've knit a cowl. I've knit um, a hat, like a toque. Uh, I've knit a few things with this yarn and I am seriously considering a sweater quantity um, from the next mill run because I would love to have a whole sweater out of this. If you want inspiration um, for a sweater, you can go and watch Knitting a Good Yarn. Their latest episode that they released this month Jackie talks about the sweater that she knit out of this yarn and it's gorgeous. So this is the low mileage. It's beautiful. It's from Crooks Fibers. And I know that there's another mill run coming really, really soon. If you only want buy one skein, this cowl would be my top recommendation. If not this cowl, then um, a toque. For yourself it's just so special this one as i was saying you can see and i'll hold it up real close i hope you can see do you see the difference between the blue face luster and the yak yarn it's just so beautiful so the construction, as I was saying, you start out knitting it back and forth. And as you're knitting back and forth, you're increasing and that creates this um, garter panel. And then you join in the round. And as you're joining in the round, you're creating the stockinette panel as well. So um, it's, it's a really fun, interesting construction and it comes out absolutely beautifully. You do, however, want to block it and block it quite aggressively, not just a steam block. You wanna wet block this one so that that lace panel opens up beautifully, but also so that that ribbing lies nice and flat. I love this one. It knits up fast and we're coming into gift knit season. If you haven't started your Christmas gift knits, maybe you should start. This one would be a really, really fun Christmas gift knit and you'd be able to participate in the knit along. This one would make a very, very beautiful gift and it knit up really fast. This one, well, Brittany of Crooks Fibers knit hers in two days. I'm not that fast. This one took me about a week to knit and I don't have that much time for knitting so you could probably do it fairly quickly. This one took longer because it is quite a bit longer. Um, it's, it's a long tube that then you Kitchener stitch together as I said but if you're a quick knitter this one would also make a really really nice gift knit and especially at Christmas time because it's just 
so warm and cozy. The colorwork pattern is super intuitive. It's easy to memorize. It's got a nice texture that you notice once you're wearing it and you'll notice in the knitting of it, there's some pearl stitches in there that give it some oomph. There's some slip stitches. It's, it's super fun. It's not boring at all. And you could um, make the colors very Christmassy and that would be fun if you wanted to knit that up as a gift knit for the holidays. The other thing that I have to show is this fleur shawl. I love this. This is, I think, probably my favorite knit so far this year. I loved, loved every single stitch. And I can't always say that about every single knit. But this one was so much fun. I have wanted to make this shawl for quite a while now. It's um, an espace tricot free pattern. It's a very long, but not very deep, triangular shaped shawl. And if you like a tassel, I think adding a tassel to the bottom of this shawl would be so, so cute because you would echo those baubles in the top of your tassel like that. And I think that would be super fun. I think this shawl, you know, you could put tassels at the end and, and at the tip and it would be so cute, don't you think? I don't know, if you don't like tassels, it's totally fine, but I love them. This one I also knit out of Crooks Fibers Low Mileage Wool. And I mean, look at the drape. This is a shawl that I know I will be wearing for years and years and years to come. Both the stripes and uh, the solid part is knit out of this low mileage wool with its gorgeous drape and its lovely luster. I paired it for extra warmth. You don't have to, but I did pair it for extra warmth with mohair and the mohair was naturally dyed with logwood from Bleu Poussière and I, I really enjoy it. It's such a lovely knit. Now I will say as I was knitting, I did notice that my fingers would turn a little bit blue and that's from the logwood. But once I blocked it, um, it, it has stopped shedding the color. That's called dry shedding. When the color comes onto your hands as you knit and it stopped that right away. And I do know from speaking with a lot of different knitting friends that um, logwood and dry shedding seem to go together. It happens quite a lot. This is so warm and so cozy. And I really, really, really love the way it falls. Also, if you have a, um, a tie for your shawl, like a shawl clip or a shawl uh, belt or whatever, that would be really nice. I have one. I should have brought it to show you. I'll show you in November. Um, I have one from Pearl and Hank that I love. Uh, I, I promise I'll show you in November. It's so good. Um, but I will link Pearl and Hank below. And I find this shape really awesome. I love a triangular shaped shawl, but this one with its really, really long, narrow triangle, I don't know. I find it so easy to wear, so cozy, so comfortable. I'm so happy with it. I couldn't be happier. And this one, you know, I don't participate in knit alongs all that often. This one is also a knit along. This one is part of a knit along that um, Carmen and Jackie from the Knitting a Good Yarn podcast, they are hosting the Fleur Along. And it's running still now until uh, the, I think the solstice if I'm not wrong. I'll link them below as well and you can go and check that out. But there's so many beautiful shawls popping up with the hashtag Fleur Along. There's tons of inspiration for you. The pattern comes with two different options. The first option is for a striped one like I did. And I didn't do any modification to it at all, except 
I made the smaller baubles. There's two different bauble sizes. The first one is um, supposed to be larger baubles on the stripy uh, version of this shawl and I didn't want the big big baubles. I wanted smaller baubles. So I used the small baubles that are in the solid color version of the shawl. I have a feeling I'm going to also do a solid color and I might end up knitting that as well. It's such a fun shawl to knit. The only thing that I did different um, other than the size of the bobbles is, and you can actually see, this stripe is wider than this blue stripe. And the reason that this stripe gets shallower is because I was running out of yarn. And um, Crooks Fibers was so kind to give me the last little bit of her yarn, but I ran out, so I had to make that a little narrower. And I will say that about the low mileage wool, because it's a single flock and it's one mil run that happens twice a year, if you want to, if you're thinking about getting enough yarn to make a specific project, I recommend buying it all at the same time because it does sell out and um, and there is no guarantee, even with the next mill run, that the same fleeces will be blended together in the mill. Um, they might come from two different sheep. The combination is just whatever the um, the woman who runs the mill, she looks at the fleeces and then decides how to combine them to make the nicest yarn. And that might change year to year because it's a flock and the flock changes, the, the yarn changes because the wool changes, because the sheep change. So I love that organic quality of this yarn. But I will say, if you're going to knit a project, get enough to knit a whole project all at once. I had um, some yarn that it um, Crooks Fibers gave me to try the yarn. It's not the same amount of yarn as she has in the Hanks now. It was less than that. So I think with what she has now, you could do two Hanks of yarn to do the fleur shawl if you wanted. Uh, I needed two plus a little bit, but you know, you could always just modify it. Like I didn't have to do that last um, piece. I could have ended it there and it would have been just fine. So you can, the pattern is very adjustable. You can adjust it however you want. If you're interested in a crescent shape shawl, if you prefer that, Jackie from Knitting a Good Yarn, she was speaking with Melissa who designed the pattern and she figured out how to create a crescent shape of the fleur shawl. So if you don't like um, a triangle like I do, maybe you prefer a crescent, Jackie is your gal. She'll help you out with the crescent because I know she's written up the directions for um, turning this shawl from a triangular shaped shawl into a crescent shaped shawl. So such a fun knit along. Thank you to the Knitting a Good Yarn podcast for um, hosting that knit along. I had so much fun knitting this shawl and I really recommend that you do one as well if you're thinking about it. Get off the fence and just cast on because you're going to love it. The last thing I wanted to show you is um, I should really be showing you the toque that I'm wearing in the pictures from the um, from the time out at the cabin, but um, I left that at work and I can't show it to you. So, and I'm not going to wait. Uh, I've already recorded this episode once and then the file was corrupted and I had to record it again. I'm not going to wait any longer to publish this episode. You'll just have to see that toque another time. It is, if you saw in the pictures and you were wondering, oh, what's the toque? Um, it is the Oslo hat by Petite Knits. And I will talk about it in November because I really enjoyed knitting that one as well. And it's a great basic toque if you're looking for that. Oh, and I should say, I do live in Canada and we call uh, winter hats that, that are knitted, we call them toques. So, 
Uh, I'll talk about that fluorescent blue toque in November. But you also saw me earlier in this episode wearing an orange jumper, and this is it. And I wanted to show it to you. I don't know that I've shown it before on the podcast, but I did knit it quite a while ago. I knit it last, I think last autumn. And I really like it. I get tons of wear out of it. And I wanted to tell you about it because um, I wanted to talk about personalizing our knits and making sure that the knit really works for you because what works for me might not work for you. It might, but it also might not. And what works for a designer when they're writing a pattern, well, it works for them and it might work for a great many people, but you might need to tweak it a little. On the other hand, you might want to make something all your own and just take an inspiration from a pattern. And that is what I did with this one. So Ronja Hakaleto, who is a designer from Finland, whose work I adore, she has a pattern for a jumper with all over moss stitch. And I really, really liked it. However, I also really, really like Albina McLaughlin's Versal sweater because I love the construction of that sweater. It's got these saddle shoulders in the construction. I'm not sure. There you go. You can see this shoulder construction there. It's a saddle shoulder. I really like the way that fits on me. I have quite broad shoulders. I'll take this off so you can see. I do have quite broad shoulders and they are quite straight. They're not slopey shoulders at all. And I find that the saddle shoulder, I just like the way it sits on me. The Versal pattern is a great pattern. I've knit it a number of times now. I would say it's up there with my very favorite basic go-to sweater jumper patterns. I really like the fit of it. But I wanted that moss stitch fabric, um, Rania Hakaleto's pattern. And so I mashed them up together and I created this jumper. And then I also wanted to have warmth around my neck. So uh, the Versal does not, I don't think, have this kind of a cowl neck. And the way that I cast on is uh, the technique I learned from Miss Evil Knits. And if you need inspiration to go off and make your knitted garments so that they work for you, Miss Evil Knits is a fantastic teacher. She um, has created a YouTube series. I will link it. It's called On Creativity. It's 10 episodes where she walks you through more like a guide, like a tour guide of knitting. She walks you through the ideas of patterns, pattern selection, modifying patterns, shapes, how you create a shape that fits your body, um, color choices, creating a wardrobe that works for you with your knitwear. And um, I absolutely love that series on creativity by Miss Evil. And she also talks about using um, an I-cord cast on. I've got this cute little um, progress keeper that I use. It's, there you go. I use that to tell me the front and the back of the jumper. Anyhow, she uses an I-cord cast on for a jumper like this so that the neckline stays solid. And I have found that the I-cord cast on works really well. You don't get that. Sometimes you know how your knits, sometimes the, the neckline just grows, it stretches out. I-cord cast on. It's super helpful. It doesn't grow at all. So I did an I-cord cast on. I knit the whole thing and then I picked up and I knit the cowl neckline and I did a broken rib. You can see there. I really like the look of a broken rib stitch. Broken rib is super easy to do. It's 
um, one round where you're knitting and purling and then a round where you're just knitting and then the next round it's knitting and purling and then the next round it's just knitting and you alternate like that. I created the cowl quite wide so you can see it is quite wide and open and the reason I did that was because I wanted to be able to move from outside to inside with this jumper and um, so creating that wide cowl allows me to fit a narrower knit underneath it so like that so that I can wear two cowls for outside and then when I go inside I can take this one off and just wear that and it's more open so it lets the air in and cools me off a little bit. I really think it worked out well. I used the moss stitch because when you create that kind of texture you're creating space for air pockets in your garment and the air pockets is what acts as the insulator. That's why it's so warm and cozy because all those, that texture, all those little pockets of warm air, they stay close to your body and keep you nice and cozy. So this is one of my most worn pieces. Uh, I will never write up the pattern because it's not my pattern. It's mainly Albina McLaughlin and Rania Hakaleto with a little touch of something from Miss Evil. Um, and then when you get to the cuffs, these cuffs were inspired by Ineza's song. I also really love her patterns. She has mittens and I've knit them called the Hemme Fingerless Mittens. And they have a cuff just like this one that incorporates a Latvian braid. And I loved that. So I adapted my um, cuffs to fit so that I could use that um, that pattern. I really, really, really enjoyed it. And then I did uh, another eye cord as a bind off. Now for uh, jumpers that I knit out of Newtedon, and this is one that's knit out of Newtedon, I really, really love doing the eye cord bind off. I find that um, it, it just wears super well. I have one that I'm knitting right now. I'm excited to show you that one. Uh, probably that'll be in November, unless I can knit really fast and get it done for the Halloween episode. So that's the knitting for October. So cozy, so warm, uh, so much fun. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And I hope that you um, have found inspiration here take care of each other. It's tough times. Be gentle with yourself. Look after each other. We are so looking forward to the Halloween episode. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.